Hey Pyro, ever wanted to try your hand at leather? Well, you are in luck because in this video tutorial, we are going to be turning leather into this really cute wall hanging. If you have signed up, for the Crate Club subscription box, then you have everything that you need in this box to get this done from start to finish. If you don't have a Crate Club subscription box, you're gonna have to buy it on your own. Now, if you wanna join the Crate Club, that's at crateclub.burnsavvy.com. We are going to be taking a high quality five, six ounce piece of leather. This is an eight by 10 piece of leather. It's also vegetable tanned. Vegetable tanned leather is safe for burning. Other types of tanning are not safe for burning. Some of them use chrome, and when you burn that, that can release dangerous fumes. So make sure that you are only burning vegetable tanned leather. We will also be using a veg tan piece of practiced leather. That way you can practice the techniques and really get yourself totally familiar with using leather because it is different than burning wood. We will also be using a magnetic frame. And what that's going to do is help hang your leather piece when it's done. It makes it really, really easy to frame your finished piece. You're also going to need your pattern, the carbon paper to transfer it, a transfer tool, and some scissors. Those are all the pattern transfer tools that you will need. And then you will need some leather conditioner. You will need a rag to apply the leather conditioner. So let's get into this. I'm Jenny Lizenby, your pyro professor. Let's burn. Now, before we do anything, I gotta tell you, if your hands are dirty or wet or oily, that is going to show on the leather. You do not want to work with oily hands or hands that have water on them or anything like that. If you're eating, put it to the side, wash your hands, fully dry your hands, and then work with the leather. You want dry, clean hands to work with leather. If you get oil on it, if you get uh, water on it or any of those other things, it's going to show. A quick and easy way to make sure that your leather stays clean is to first of all have clean dry hands, but then use a piece of paper anytime that you're putting your hand down, say to burn or to trace or anything like that. That will keep a barrier between the leather and your hands and it will help to reduce the amount of oil that will get on the leather. A lot of times when you're tooling and doing things like that, you want to get the leather wet and you want to get it wet on both sides so that it will be firmer. You don't really need to do that with pyrography, but if you would like to, that is an optional step. All you will need is a damp washcloth. Then what you want to do is kind of work with a wet edge. You want to start on one side, kind of working in a circular motion and work it all the way across. Since I'm not doing it on my main piece, I thought I would show you on the practice piece of leather. And then once you do that, if you don't wet the other side, this is going to tighten and it will curl. So you want to get the other side wet also. Now I'm going to let that sit for 24 hours. If you don't have a flat surface, it will also hold the shape, mold to the shape of whatever you have it on. So you don't want that. It is a thicker leather, so it will do it less than some of the thinner leathers but it still needs to be on a flat surface, okay? Now I chose not to do this on my main piece because I haven't seen it make a big enough difference when it comes to doing pyrography on leather. So now you want to take your pattern and if you had your crate, this will be in there and you want to cut off the bottom down here. Now again, if you have the wood burning tools and accessories kit in addition to your crate, you will have these cute little scissors. I love them, they're so sharp, they're lightweight. You wanna make sure that you leave space at the bottom and the top for the frame. So the frame is going to be basically sitting here and here, right? And so this to be centered should actually line up with the top. That's how I designed this pattern is so that that would make it easy for you to be able to just make this centered fairly easily. Line it up at the top and center it. You can eyeball this, it's not super important that it's exact. If you're concerned about it, you can always fold it in half, right? And pinch that one little spot. Now you have a mark. And then you can measure this, find the center of your leather, and then line this up with the center of the leather. I'm just going to eyeball it. Line it up at the top. Then you want to take a piece of tape. Actually, you want to take two pieces of tape. And then you want to take this 
and tape it across the top. Now you do not want tape on the front. A lot of times tape will leave a residue and you don't want that. So line this up at the top of the leather and then tape down one side of the pattern and tape it to the top and the back. Then you wanna do the same over here. And the idea is to make sure that the pattern stays in place and yet is easily lifted up, okay? That's how I check my patterns to make sure that I'm getting everything transferred. So once you have your pattern in place, you want to take the carbon paper and you will have a fresh clean piece of carbon paper. You can see I've used this one. I like to use and reuse my carbon paper over and over and over. So all you have to do is take this and put the shiny side down in between the pattern and the leather. And now you wanna be very careful because it's really, really hard to remove mistakes from leather. I have not been successful at removing mistakes. Hiding mistakes, yes. Removing them, no. So you wanna make sure that you are very, very careful. Now all you're going to do is take your transfer tool now you can use the tracing tool like you have if you have the wood burning tools and accessories kit, or you can use a pen or a pencil. I like to keep my patterns clean and I like to use this tool. I make sure that the carbon paper is all the way underneath the pattern so that you make sure that you don't trace over something and it doesn't transfer. That's frustrating. So make sure the carbon paper is covering the pattern entirely from behind. Then all we do is trace over the pattern. Now, if you wanna check your progress, you simply lift up the paper and the carbon paper, and you can see how far you've gotten. And I like to check it periodically throughout to make sure that I'm getting everything transferred. Then you'll want to double check for any little parts that you may have missed. And once you are satisfied with it, you can take this off. Now I'm gonna show you, based on which kind of burner you have, what kind of nibs you wanna use. If you have this kind of burner, you'll want to use something called a flow point. If you have this kind of burner, then you'll want to use a similar point that also has a nice, rounded, thick tip. If you have one of these kind of burners, I recommend either a large ballpoint or I recommend the writing nib, but they basically get the same job done. Before you burn your actual piece, I highly recommend that you practice your techniques here on the practice piece of leather. That way you make sure that you are happy with your end design. Now, some of the things I like to do is test out the heat. So for example, I start out with say a level five. And for me, that's a medium heat. If you don't have levels on your machine, make sure that you are using whatever a medium heat is for you. You'll have to test your machine and see what the lowest and highest temperatures are and then find a medium. And what you wanna do is test it out and make sure that that is a good heat. Now I've actually brought mine up to about a five and a half, so just above a medium heat. And you can see leather is beautiful to work with. You don't have to fight any grain. You can just go with it. It's awesome. And if you move slowly and then go faster, you can get some tapered lines. But if you press it and then move it down, you're going to get blobby lines, right? Just like I teach you in the techniques video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put that on the screen for you. But you want to make sure that you are always in motion. Always, do not stop when you are burning. You want to make sure that the moment you come in, you're moving. All right, time for the fun part. Now we are going to trace over this whole pattern using our burner. Whichever burner that you have and whichever nib that you chose. If you are nervous about getting oils or water on the leather, then make sure that you get a nice clean sheet of paper to rest your hand on. Again, I am working at a medium, just above medium heat. So for me, that is a level five and a half. So for you, you need to find the middle to slightly higher than the middle and see how that heat level works, okay? Okay. 
Now, something else I want to point out again is that mistakes are very, very hard to remove. So you're not going to be sanding it. That makes the leather white and it shows everything. So what you want to do is just trace it carefully and then make sure that you cover over all of the drawing lines. This is what I mean about tiny little mistakes and about working them in as opposed to trying to erase them. Right there. I want that to be smoothed out. I don't like that. So I'm going to try to thicken that line to make that blend in. That's how I'm going to work it in as opposed to trying to erase the little blip that came out to the side. Now, no one would ever know that there was a tiny little blip right there. That's what I mean by working it in and hiding it as opposed to trying to erase it, remove it, sand it off or anything like that, which really doesn't work with leather. Isn't it pretty? I love working with leather. It's just so smooth and so satisfying to work with. If this has been helpful so far, it would be amazing if you would hit that like button. It helps this video get in front of other pyros that this could help. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So once you're done with this, then it's time to pull out your leather conditioner and your applicator rag. Now the applicator rag, you're simply going to take a little bit of this and wipe it over the entire piece and what that's going to do is condition the leather and help it to not dry out and again you want to start from one end to the other and you want to work in circular motions once this is entirely sealed with the leather conditioner, then you wanna make sure that you let it sit for about two hours. And then in two hours, we're gonna buff off all the excess. Once that is completely sealed, it's time to add the frame. Now, what I like to do is start with the top piece. This has the cord and the piece that actually has the cord attached, I'm gonna put that in the back so it hides the cord. And what I'll do is line that up with the top of the frame, and then I will line up this one in the same place. And then you can see the leather kind of sandwiched between the two. Then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. You simply take it apart, line it up with the bottom of the leather, and do the same over here where it pinches it together. Ta-da! It's ready to hang. You might want to consider watching this video right here where I'm going to be showing you another wonderful video tutorial and consider subscribing if you want more regularly in your YouTube feed. I'm Jani Lisenby, your pyro professor. Later, pyro. Mm -hmm.